The Zeba by Steroids is a high quality aluminium invisible finishing profile. It's designed to be used where the carpet requires sort of turning and tacking around open spindles, around landings, in doorways, fire halves, um, or even if the room's got a, a bead incorporated into the skirting board. The profile itself actually allows for 15mm carpet to be turned underneath. It's got a 0.7 base on it and it's designed to be mechanically fixed, incorporating the gripper into the profile itself. It's got a chamfered edge and it's got a 23mm wide fixing plate. So it's a very secure product when it's installed. In this video I'm just going to be running through fixing methods and how to use the profile, both on a straight finish and also onto a, a curve as well. So when we're working on top of a, a solid subfloor, I'm just using a bit of plywood for demonstration purposes. British Standards recommends that the gripper is cut down to 150mm lengths. These lengths are actually to accommodate any slight undulations in the subfloor. If I put a full length down, the Z bar is 1.8 metres, I'm actually compromising the amount of contact with the subfloor dependent on the undulations. So again, just cutting them down allows you to get a, a better fixing. So the Z bar, if I put that on the floor, a piece of underneath, then gripper on top. I've actually got two points of contact. So the Z-bar to the subfloor and then the gripper to the Z-bar. If I was to do it that way, if what I'd want to do is basically rough up the back of this Z-bar. Just with a bit of coarse sandpaper and then make sure you, you wipe away the dust. That'll give it a better key to the subfloor. However, a bit of advice is to actually basically either drill some holes in the bar or cut some V notches out. That means that when that goes onto the floor, the adhesive underneath will squeeze up through. And then once the gripper goes on top, again, more adhesive, it's getting a, a better contact. And put that to demonstration purposes. I'm just going to use some flexi fix, but any non expanding cartridge adhesive will suffice. Again, just follow manufacturer's instructions, priming the subfloor, etc. I'll just run a bead along first. And if I place the notched one down, you can just see that that's creating those little peaks. And then apply a bit more adhesive. And install the gripper rod on top. So the V's give it a, a good bond, but of course do the same thing with the, the drilled Z-bar. Again, you can see it just squeezing up through. So once that's fully cured, as long as the subfloor is sound, that'll give that enough stability to allow me to dress the Z-bar down. And the Z-bar with the rolled edge, steroids have actually designed it with a groove running along the fold. That allows that to basically lever over easier. If you try and pull that upwards to get the carpet underneath and down again, you can compromise that groove and you can actually snap off the, the roll edge. So as it's set, as long as you leave your gap to allow the carpet to tuck underneath, this shouldn't be disturbed. Once the carpet's underneath, that will literally clamp down. 
When we're installing the Z-bar onto a timber substrate, we need to mechanically fix. So I'll use the gripper to pin through into the subfloor itself. In regards to the positioning of it, if you're working up against open spindles or beading or any fixed object, make sure you leave the appropriate gap as recommended by the relevant standards. So I'll get that into position. Place the gripper on top. And then pin straight through. Get that chamfer up against that chamfered edge on the Z-bar. Making sure I've got fixings within 25 mil of the end. The more secure the gripper, the stronger the hold on the Z-bar, allowing it to, to dress down. If I was to use a wider gripper, then what I'd want to do is actually put a fixing closer to the front edge, just to make sure that that front edge is supporting the Z-bar itself. If the fixings are too far back, then that could actually start to pull backwards, or it's just going to bounce too much and it's not going to dress down. So I'm just going to get the carpet onto the gripper, then cut this back and I'm going to roll it underneath and dress the Z-bar down. So there's two ways of doing this. One is to stretch first and then trim back. Just folding the carpet back on itself. Another way of doing it is to mark up the back of the carpet. And then carefully release and use a straight edge. So I was doing it with the straight edge, so what I'd then do is just crimp that edge and that will allow it to tuck under easier. So you get that back on. So once that's stretched on, just tuck that underneath. If I get the tuck down in there. So just keeping pressure with my free hand to stop that coming back out. And taking a tapping block, I'll dress that down then. You can also use a turning tool. Just for difficult to reach places, these are ideal. And again, tap and block. What I can do is actually move across a few inches and that will lock those two points and I can just work along. 
putting those in then. So this part I haven't crimped, but you can still crimp it when it's on top of the gripper. So what I'll do is I'll actually keep downward pressure with my two hands, make sure it doesn't release off the gripper, just work along in sections. The tapping block I'm using is just a bit of two, two and a half by one, a bit of felt on the top, but I've actually put some dimension strip on the bottom to create that angle. So once it goes on, even if it's flat, it's still angled on top of that bar. So it just allows it to, to tap down a bit more. Also done the same on that side for longer runs across doorways and stuff. So we can see just on the edge that that's folded Nicely underneath. I'm now going to put the knee kicker on and I'm going to stretch away from this. And we'll see how much that pulls along that edge. As you can see it is pulling, but it's still secure along that point. Plenty of tension running through the length of that carpet. In addition to the straight runs, we can also create curves using the Stero Z bar. If I want an internal curve, what I need to do is just cut down using the snips just up to the chamfered edge. Turn that base plate down. I'll do I'll do the same on the turn edge as well so that will allow that to actually flex around if I wanted to do an external then I can do the same thing Cutting down that turned edge. So when it comes to cutting the base side, I'll cut out some beads. So now I've got those cut out, I'm just going to install it. So I'll actually pin it into position first. Fixings because the grippers can hold the majority anyway. Bring that around. Put the 
to make life a little bit easier, I could. Just bring it back slightly if I wanted to, and just adjust it as I go along. Then when it comes to the externals, work those around. So you can see there it's giving it a, an internal and also an external. Now it will only go so far because if you do go too far you could actually snap the upstand. So it's really just about sort of playing with it on site and seeing what you can get out of it. So once the Z bars installed is all I need to do is grip her up along the base plate, get the underlay installed, then install the carpet the same way as I did with the straight section. But what I'll do around the curve, I'll put a few relief cuts in, making sure I'm not going down to the edge of the Z bar. Again, about 15 mil back, 10 mil back. Take the waste off, tuck it in, and get it dressed down. <laughs> stretch the carpet onto the gripper and then work the Z bar. Once I'm stretched on, I'm now going to relief cut around the curves. So I'm going to bring the carpet back so instead of cutting all the way down to the edge of the Z-bar, which will actually lead to exposed edges, I'm going to cut back again roughly around about 15mm. That's where I put my relief cuts.
Once we've got those relief cuts in, it just makes it a lot easier to form that shape around now. We'll actually start at the curves and then work both ways around. Just pressing down as I go, same as I've done with the, the straight section. position to keep on top of that gripper. I'll lock that first bit in, make sure that's still underneath again, pressure with the hand. That section is now locked. see on the end result the profile the Z bar is actually giving it a nice consistent smooth transition between the carpet and the floor area it's shown you can actually create various different shapes with it it's taking away that turn and tact finish which can sometimes cause quite a, a displeasing aesthetic look to it and it's fully secure because it's on the, the grip rod itself clamped underneath that aluminium bar and the Z-Bar being an invisible profile sort of goes against the ethos of stair rods. Stair rods do produce high quality premier bars which are aesthetically pleasing, especially with the Alley tram line range and the premier range. But this one is hidden underneath. So practicality wise, it's absolutely superb and another good product from uh, an innovative company. Mm -hmm. 